Anthropologists often wonder why modern humans took so long to leave Africa. And until I saw this map, I didn't appreciate just how large of a continent Africa is. The countries of United States, India, and China can all comfortably fit into Africa. The African continent is almost 12 million square miles, compared to Europe, which is less than 4 million square miles and North America, which is 9.5 million square miles. No part of Africa is ever frozen over, so there was ample reason that modern humans took so long to leave the continent. It was a Garden of Eden, especially when the climate was cooler. And there was no competition from Neanderthals. Modern humans are sometimes referred to as Homo sapiens sapiens, to distinguish us from earlier modern humans. Did scientists discover the oldest Homo sapiens remains on record? That depends on your definition of what is a modern human. We're just beginning to fill in the huge gaps of human history. But the story of human evolution in Africa is undergoing a major rewrite. Scientists say fossils unearthed in Morocco show early Homo sapiens roamed Africa 100,000 years earlier than previously thought. The discovery shakes up a long-established consensus about the origins of our species. Not only do the fossils blow previous understandings about the history of our species out of the water, but the fact that they were discovered in North Africa, rather than in the continent's eastern region, also defies expectations. This material represents the very root of our species, the oldest Homo sapiens ever found in Africa or elsewhere, say paleoanthropologists. Each year, our human story grows more complicated and fascinating. Just in the past decade we've learned, through DNA evidence, that we mated with Neanderthals, Denisovans, and probably several other species. We've learned that at one time our world was inhabited by several subspecies of human. Still, there's so much we don't know. And meanwhile, we keep making startling new discoveries, like Homo naledi that lived around 250,000 years ago in South Africa, and could have been in contact with our ancestors. Our experience in Stone Age Africa, however it went, wasn't simple. There's a story that we've been telling about the origin of our species for decades. It goes something like this, around 200,000 years ago, in East Africa, near modern-day Ethiopia, the first Homo sapiens diverged from an ancestral species, perhaps Homo erectus. From there, we spread, in a linear manner over millennia north into Europe, and then through the rest of the world. There is even a subspecies of modern human, called Homo sapiens adultu, that was thought to be the forerunner of modern humans. He is also called Herto Man, and refers to the 160,000 to 154,000 year old human remains discovered in the upper Herto area of the Buri formation in the Afar Triangle of Ethiopia. That story, it turns out, is wrong, or at least woefully incomplete. Anthropologists say they found evidence that the dawn of our species may have actually been much, much earlier. The evidence is the remains of ancient humans, dating at around 300,000 years old, that look a lot like Homo sapiens, and were found in the Jebel Erhoud cave in Morocco, thousands of miles from Ethiopia. That's significant because it's much older than anything else in Africa that we could relate to our species. This represents the very root of our species, the oldest Homo sapiens ever found in Africa or elsewhere. Or maybe not. Whether these remains truly represent the root of humanity depends on what your definition of what humanity is. And on that question, there's surprising nuance and disagreement among scientists, whose careers are made by discovering new species. However, this anthropological oddity discovered in Morocco could be the oldest Homo sapiens skull ever found. These specimens, pieces of skull, jaw, and assorted other body parts of five individuals, are not new to paleoanthropology. The Moroccan fossils were discovered in a cave between 2007 and 2011. They are believed to come from at least five individuals, three adults, one teenager and child of around eight years old. The first fossils were discovered in the 1960s by miners clearing a hillside in Morocco. And they were a curiosity. Scientists at the time assumed the fossilized remains, along with fragments of their stone tools, were relatively recent, maybe only 40,000 years old. 
but something didn't add up, the specimens looked more primitive than what you'd find from 40,000 years ago. Their facial structures looked modern, but parts of the skull that surround the brain were smaller in some key areas. When the anthropologists got the chance to reanalyze the site in recent years, they gathered fragments of flint that had been exposed to fires made by the occupants. They used thermoluminescence, a technology that measures the exposure of stone minerals to radiation generated by heat, for example, from a cooking fire. When those early humans put their flint tools into the fire all those millennia ago, the heat released electrons from the rock's crystalline structure. Since then, those electrons have been slowly replenished over time from solar radiation. In the modern day, scientists heat up those pieces of flint, and the reaccumulated electrons are released, measured, and can give scientists a date for when they were initially fired. That's how they got a date of 300,000 years, give or take a few tens of thousands of years. These individuals were not modern humans like us, but a slightly earlier form of Homo sapiens, one with a less developed brain and perhaps other differences in its DNA. And these differences between us and them are evidence that evolution occurs over a gradient. It also shows the biggest evolutionary change we've undergone in the past 300,000 years is in the size of our brains. And all this evidence points to a pan-African hypothesis of human development. The hypothesis is that we did not just emerge in eastern Africa. As of 300,000 years ago, our ancestors were already spread around the continent. Paleoanthropologists have also identified a probable Homo sapiens skull in South Africa dating back 250,000 years. And we were on the move, and spreading our genes. The idea is that there is no one Garden of Eden in Africa, or if there is a Garden of Eden, it is the entire continent of Africa. But are they really Homo sapiens? While some anthropologists don't doubt the dating of these findings, they do question whether we can really call these specimens Homo sapiens. After all, they do have some significant differences when it comes to the shape of their brains, which is a defining characteristic of our kind. Some scientists say that you have to be fairly rigorous with what you admit into the Homo sapiens family. However, there are plenty of scientists out there who are willing to take a much looser view of what Homo sapiens is, and would be happy to cram this find into Homo sapiens as a matter of convenience, or a matter of philosophy. The archaeologists behind the Morocco skulls are firm in their belief that these are indeed Homo sapiens, because they say the reality is that there is a continuous line of evolution between early sapiens and humans of today, without any breaking point along this line. Evolution is not a straight line. It's one that produces many branches, most of which die off. Those branches can also join back together in the future. Those rejoined branches sprout more branches. Some of those branch off and recombine. And other branches die out. Evolution is a tangled mess. Human lineages are constantly splitting, dying, and rejoining. It's believed our line age split off from our closest relatives, the Neanderthals, around 500,000 years ago. But it's not clear when we became Homo sapiens. Evolution does not provide clean breaks from one form of a species to the next. So, are these Moroccan specimens truly our ancestors? We don't know. Did they give rise to our ancestors who lived in East Africa? Maybe. Or are they an offshoot of the main line, a group that was on their way to becoming their own distinct species but then died off? There's a really interesting story here, but we don't quite know what it is. At the very least, this evidence pushes back the start date of the Middle Stone Age, the age when people started to make sharp blades out of stone. The fact that we don't know how human these people were, makes me appreciate the complexities of evolution a bit more. The farther we trace back our human family, the less those individuals look like us. Their faces are the same, but their skulls are a little smaller. Maybe they have a harder time keeping up with the fast pace of your conversation. That person is both like you and something different at the same time. Homo sapiens is now the only human species, but 300,000 years ago we would have shared the planet with other now extinct cousins such as the Neanderthals, Denisovans, the more ape-like Homo nalidi and the much smaller Homo floresiensis, the Flores hobbit. 
the evolutionary lineage that led to Homo sapiens is believed to have diverged from the predecessors of Neanderthals and Denisovans more than half a million years ago. But with few fossils to work with, the history of 